Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about nonlinear optimization. So, what is optimization? Um, what does it mean in mathematical terms? So, uh, not a typical optimization problem relates to finding the minimum or maximum of a function, right? Optimization refers to both minimization problems and maximization problems. What does that mean? For example, let's say we have a function f of x of one parameter, right? x is the independent variable, or in this case, the parameter that we're seeking, and we want to find the value of x such that f of x attains its minimum value or in some cases, we would like to find the maximum value, right? So this is why we refer to minimization or maximization problems. Both of them are optimization problems. And we can remember some, some rules from, from basic calculus when we have a function of one, one independent variable, one parameter here in this case, x. Uh, there are a few tests that we can use to decide whether a particular point in the x-axis is a minimum or a maximum. The first requirement for both minimum and maximum, as you can see from this figure, is that the first derivative of the function f of x must be zero at that point. If it's not zero, for example, here in this point in the middle, then that means that there is a direction where it can go that will increase the value of the, the, of the function, and therefore that point cannot be a maximum. A global or local maximum. We'll talk about that in a second. Right, and so here we have a, a, a minimum of this function, and here's a maximum of the function, and that's different from the roots of the functions that we just talked about a few, a few other times. So how do we decide whether a point is a minimum or a maximum? Well, we look at the second derivative of the function at that point. If the second derivative of that function, which again, the second derivative implies curvature, as, as we all know from calculus. Uh, if the second derivative is negative, that means that parabola is pointing down, and this is going to be a maximum at this point. If the second derivative is positive, then this parabola is pointing up at this point, and this, in this case, the, 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 the extremum is a minimum. So in mathematical terms, we refer to these problems as optimization problems, and there are two kinds, again, the minimization and maximization. When it's a minimization problem, we write it like this mathematically. This means find x or minimize over the parameter x of this function, f of x. Conversely, the maximization problem can be written as maximize over the parameter x of this function. Right? So whenever you see this notation in textbooks and papers and websites and so on, that's what it means. It's an abbreviation. Why is it useful to be able to solve optimization problems? We already saw some problems that were written as optimization problems uh, way back when, for example, when we talked about fitting a model to some given data in such a way that the model passes closest to the data, right? So find the model parameters so that that model builds a function and that function passes as close as possible to the, the given data. And that, so we, we defined a measurement of how close a function passes to some data, and that was the, the, the sum of squared errors between the model and the data, and we found the model parameter that found the minimum value of the sum of squared errors, right? That was a minimization problem. There are many other types of, of applications where uh, in fact, almost all engineering problems can be somewhat uh, 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 written as an optimization problem. For example, if we have to find the shortest distance between two points, there are many options to get from point A to point B, right? There may be many roads, but there might be one road that has the distance, that, that has shortest distance between these two points, right? Of course, if we were talking about air travel, for example, the shortest distance would be the straight line between these, these two points, right? Uh, discounting the curvature of the Earth, for example. Uh, but in this case, when you're driving by car, you cannot drive over land. You have to go over roads. So th there are a few options, and you choose the shortest distance. 
right? You might you might decide to do this if you are, for example, a company like Coca Cola del delivering bottles from one city to the other, right? You you want to drivers to spend the least time on the road, the least um, the least fuel, and so on, right? In in other uh, there are many applications for optimization process. The problems here we the, this other example we have here, you might want to optimize some chemical process. Uh, so, for example, you can have two axes. In the x-axis here, you have the pH uh, of uh, uh, some particular uh, enzyme, and and here you may have, you know, the activity uh, of that. And there may be some pH value where you get the most activity for that particular enzyme. So that's also an optimization problem. Just to give you a sense of how how important. Uh, knowing about optimization and how to solve it in computers it actually is so as we already saw in in one dimension when we're seeking for one parameter right um, and in this case we're talking about the parameter being x right if we have a quadratic function right a x squared plus bx plus c then it's relatively easy to find the minimum or maximum of that particular function because you know let's say in this case a here is positive there will be only one value where this function attains the minimum that's the whole nature of a quadratic function how do we find that one all we have to do is differentiate with respect to x and solve for where this first derivative equals to zero right that's more or less the test we had written here right find where the first derivative is equal to zero in in one dimension that's true right then we can set this becomes a linear equation on on the unknown parameter there's just one unknown parameter and one equation so we can easily solve this we also saw that when we have a multivariate quadratic equation where now x here is not a single number but a vector there is the equivalent form of a quadratic equation in this vector form where a here is a, a, a symmetric uh, matrix and if now we have multiple parameters, so we have many partial derivatives of f with respect to each element of x. So how we write this set of partial derivatives, we call this the gradient. Right? But if we set this gradient of this quadratic multidimensional equation to zero, we end up with a linear systems of equations to solve, where we can use the matrix inverse definition to write the solution for x. This is all fine and dandy for quadratic functions. Here's the bad news. The bad news is that a lot of engineering problems are not that simple. Right? The, 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 the optimization, fun the, the functions that you're trying to optimize over are not quadratics. There are certain special situations where the function turns out to be a quadratic. For example, I mentioned again that example where we try to find a a, the model's parameter for a linear model and we try to measure the squared error between the model the linear model and some data that's known as a linear least squares problem and that linear least squares problem for a, for a linear model again turns out to be a quadratic function which we can differentiate and write the solution in closed form as we just did but many many engineering problems are not that simple meaning the the function that you're trying to optimize over is not a quadratic function either in 1D or multi-dimension, but it may be a cubic, a fourth order, more general, some sinusoidal type function or something else that you may not even know, you may not even be able to categorize it, right? Uh, there are many functions like that that we define that we really don't know much about what they are, but we would still like to find at least a, 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 a local minimum or local maximum for this function. So in this case, we use what's, so called, what's called as a numeric um, optimization method. It's an iterative method. And the whole idea is to start with an initial guess. We call this guess x0 here. And again, x is in bold font here. So we should understand that this x is a vector, really. And then we start with this one. And then we just update it. We find a new guess. We call this x1. And we check, is the value of the function at x1 smaller uh, than the value of the function at x0? So in this case, we're looking at a minimization problem. And you know, you, 
either way, either a maximization or minimization problem are the same. Um, you can use minimization algorithms for maximizing a function. All you have to do is take the negative of that function, right? So you flip the function and you can you can use a minimization algorithm to maximize a function. Conversely, you can use a maximization algorithm to minimize a function. Again, you just take the negative of that function. So it, it, in, in, in a broad sense, the, the, there are two, the, the, these algorithms address the same problem. So step three, in this case, going back to the, what we we're talking about, we check whether the, the new guess is better than the old guess. And if so, we repeat, we keep improving. Right? So that's, that's the general strategy for pretty much any numerical iterative optimization method. So here's the good news is that optimization in some ways is like root finding. And we already cover several algorithms for root finding, so you already know how to do this. Why is it the same as root finding? Because as we just defined, right, the, the minimum or maximum of a function can be defined as the location or the x coordinate where the first derivative of that function is zero. Well, if I have to find, so we can call the first derivative function df dx, call it some function v, uh, g, doesn't matter what you call it, but it's just another function. And we have to find where g is zero, or in other words, where the derivative of this function is zero. This, you know, it's, it's just semantics. We already solved this problem. All this means we have to find the roots of g. Right? So we've saw two general strategy, uh, strategies for finding roots or, or finding the zeros. In, in this case, in this optimization context, finding the zeros of the first derivative in, in one dimension. Those were the bracketing methods. So the couple examples we covered are the bisection and the golden section method, for example, and, and, and open methods like the Newton's method, right? the secant method, and so on. And again, the, the, the pros and cons of these methods, uh, bracketing methods tend to be uh, more reliable as long as you have a correct initial bracket, um, but they tend to be slower than open methods. Open methods can, to be, can be unreliable, meaning can they they can diverge, right? But when they converge, they tend to converge much, much faster than, than bracketing methods. So, of course, that discussion is for, for 1D um, uh, optimization, or minimization or maximization. Uh, we'll, we will cover that as well as, as um, uh, n-dimensional or multidimensional um, optimization right in this case we have two parameters here one axis could be for example the x-axis and the other axis could be the y-axis and the z-axis here we have a function of x and y and uh, just for simplicity of visualization here you have the surface of this function and here down below you, you have a contour of this function you can use actually the MATLAB's contour MATLAB has a contour uh, command and you can plot the contour of a surface this is a figure that was generated from MATLAB, so just look up the command MATLAB contour. Right, so you can see, first of all, this is a a a, a complicated function. Right, uh, it had it can have um, local maximum and global maximum. So let's talk about what is a local maximum, like a local global maximum. A local maximum, for example, here where I'm pointing my mouse now. You can see that locally here in this coordinates right around you know the xy coordinates right around this location here there is no other value for the function that is higher than this one right but if we go farther out you can see that there is a higher uh, there's a coordinate xy such that f of xy is even higher so this is a local maximum so is this one by the way right this one here is a global maximum Right, so it's it's a very simple. It's pretty much semantics here. It's it's just a just a basic definition. Like likewise, you can talk about a global minimum and a local minimum. And as you can see, this is not a quadratic function, right? Who knows what this function really is? Uh, of course, we had to know it because we had to program and plot it. But in general, in a general engineering problem, there will be many situations where you, you might not know 
what kind of function this is, but you can still evaluate it. And perhaps you can evaluate gradients. So we'll talk about two types of uh, algorithms, uh, iterative algorithms for, for finding the maximum or minimum of these functions. One will be the gradient descent algorithm, um, which is an iterative algorithm. Um, it can converge to a, 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 a local minimum. You, you don't know whether the minimum you find with this algorithm is global or local. All you have information that it's 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 at least a global uh, a, a local max uh, maximum or minimum but you don't know much more than that and we'll also talk about newton type algorithms that once again are a little bit dangerous to use because they can diverge but when they do converge they converge much faster than the gradient descent methods so this is just an introduction for the concepts that are coming up and some key things to keep in mind is that um, as we already mentioned if you have a, a minimization algorithm, you can use it to maximize a function. All you have to do is take the negative of the function and minimize the negative of the function, right? So we'll talk about minimizations algorithms, but just keep in mind this is a general concept. Can you also be used by for, uh, for maximization? We already covered, right, that one-dimensional minimization, meaning finding the minimum of a function to respect to a single parameter, that in, in in a concrete way was already covered here and all you have to do is apply a, a root finding method to the first derivative of that function we already cover a few of these methods and next we'll cover a couple of um, n-dimensional or, or multi-dimensional uh, methods this will be specifically gradient descent and newton's method the last comment i'll make is that you you have a, a matlab function that's pretty useful it's called f mean search you can look up the documentation. It tells you how to use, uh, uh, and, and we'll have some MATLAB uh, computations to show you as well.